In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best perks for PvE and PvP for the Prophecy Dungeon weapons, the Guardian Game weapons, the Nightfall weapons. If you guys like to see more videos like these, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe. Let's first start with the Prophecy Dungeon weapons. For the first encounter, you're going to have a chance to get either one of these two weapons. Let's start with the first one. This is a Strand Pulse Rifle, and here's what you need to run for PvE. On the third column, I do recommend going for Slice because whenever you activate your class ability it would grant this weapon sever for eight seconds and on the fourth column be sure to run hatchling because whenever you get a precision final blow or whenever you get rapid kills it would spawn in a threadling at the target's location and for pvp on the third column be sure to run keep away increases reload range and accuracy when no targets are in close proximity and the fourth column be sure to run head seeker body shots landed with this weapon increases precision damage and aim assist for a short time body shots landed while this perk is active refreshes the time and for the first column be sure to run arrowhead break to give you plus 30 recoil and plus 10 handling and for the second column put ricochet rounds because it would give you plus 5 range and plus 10 stability and it would also ricochet off to hard surfaces for the second weapon that you can be able to get in the first encounter of the prophecy dungeon is this arc energy auto rifle and let me show you guys what are the best pvp rolls for this auto rifle let's start with the first column be sure to put arrowhead break on the second part column, put Ricochet Rounds. On the third column, put Zen Moment. Whenever you cause damage with this weapon, it would reduce the recoil and flinch over time. And on the fourth column is Target Lock. Damage increases the longer this weapon remains on a target. And for the PvE rolls, I do recommend going for Dragonfly on the third column slot. Whenever you get a precision kill, it would create an elemental damage explosion. And on the fourth column, put Volt Shot. Reloading this weapon after defeating a target overcharges this weapon for a short period of time causing it to jolt targets on hit. And you can also stun overload champions as well with Volt Shot. And for the origin trait for these prophecy weapons, it's called Crossing Over. This weapon has increased range and handling for the top half of the magazine, while the rounds from the bottom half of the magazine deal increased the damage. Now let's head to the second encounter for this dungeon. Here are the two weapons you should be getting. The first one is this Void Energy Shotgun, and here's what you need to run for PvP. On the first column, be sure to put Smooth Bore, because it would give you plus 15 range. On the second second part column slot go for accurized rounds because it would give you an extra plus 10 range on the third column be sure to put slide shot sliding partially reloads this weapon's magazine and temporarily boosts range and stability and on the fourth column put opening shot improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of the attack now for the pve perks there's actually two variations the first one is for void builds on the third column is repulsor's brace defeating a void debuff target grants an overshield and if you do want to get that overshield on the fourth column you do need to run destabilizing rounds final blows cause nearby targets to become volatile on the third column you could run envious assassin yes it did get a nerf but if you want to have more ammo in the mag be sure to put this one defeating a target with other weapons before drawing this one transfers ammo to the magazine from reserves and on the fourth column be sure to put one two punch hitting an enemy with every pellet in a shot increases melee damage for a short duration or if you'd like to increase the damage of your shotgun even further you can use trench barrel after a successful melee hit this weapon gains increased damage handling and reload speed for a short duration or until the three shots have been fired for the second weapon for the second encounter is this kinetic submachine gun which demolishes pvp here's what you need to run for pvp on the first column be sure to put corkscrew rifling which would give you plus five handling plus five stability and plus five range and on the second column put accurized rounds on the third column put dynamic sway reduction improves accuracy and stability while continuously holding down the trigger and the most broken perk in pvp is this one on the fourth column onslaught final blows with this weapon increases its rate of fire and back to the third column you can also run rangefinder if you like instead of dynamic sway reduction and for pve on the third column put subsistence defeating targets partially reloads magazine from reserves or you could run threat detector increases reload stability and handling when enemies are in close proximity and on the fourth column you can either put kinetic tremors sustained kinetic damage to a target emits a shockwave that damages any nearby targets or you could put frenzy being in combat for an extended Extended time increases damage, handling, and reload for this weapon until you are out of combat. Now onto the final encounter of the Prophecy Dungeon. This one is a solar energy pulse rifle. Here's what you should be running for PvP. The first column is Arrowhead Break. The second column is Ricochet Rounds. And on the third column, you can either put Heal Clip. Reloading shortly after dealing a final blow grants cure to you and your nearby allies. Or you could also put Subsistence. Defeating targets partially reloads his magazine from reserves. And on the fourth column, 
be sure to put kill clip. Reloading after a kill grants increased damage. And for PvE, I do recommend going for heal clip on the third column and on the fourth column put incandescent. Defeating a target spreads scorch to those nearby. And for the final weapon for this dungeon is the stasis kinetic hand cannon. Here's what you need to run for PvP. On the first column, be sure to run fast draw HCS. It would give you plus 15 handling, plus 5 aim assist, and plus 5 stability. And on the second column, put accurized rounds. And for the third column, you could run either encore. Final blows grant stability, range, and accuracy to this weapon. Precision final blows grants more stacks. And on the fourth column, you could run opening shot, improved accuracy and range of the opening shot of an attack, or you can run eye of the storm. This weapon becomes more accurate and boosts handling as your health gets lower. And for PvE, if you are doing a stasis build, I do recommend going for headstone because whenever you get a precision final blow kill, it will spawn in a stasis crystal. And on the fourth column, be sure to put timed payload. Projectiles attached to the enemy explode after a short delay. This is kind of like explosive payload, but this is the only thing that we got, so be sure to put this one. Now onto the nightfall weapons, and there's actually two of them. The first one is a stasis power sword. On the first column, I do recommend going for jagged edge. It would increase the damage at the cost of sword ammo. And on the second column, I do recommend going for swordsman guard. The sword guard has low overall defense, but increases its damage. On the third column, I do recommend going for chain reaction. Each final blow with this weapon creates an elemental damage explosion. And on the fourth column, be sure to go for cold steel. Powered sword hits slows targets, in which you can be able to stun overload champions as well. And for the origin traits for the nightfall weapons, there's actually two. The first one is this origin trait, Vanguard's Vindication. Final blows with this weapon grants a small amount of health, in which I do recommend putting that one on instead of the other one, which is called Stunning Recovery. Stunning a champion partially refills your magazine, triggers health regeneration, and improved recovery for a short duration. The final nightfall weapon is this solar energy grenade launcher. Here's what you need to run. On the first column, you need to go as volatile launch. It would give you plus 15 blast radius and minus 5 velocity. On the second column, you can actually choose between two. The first one is spike grenades. It would give you plus 10 stability and it would do increased damage on direct hits. And for the second one, you can go for a blinding type route. It's called disorienting grenades. So whenever you hit this near a target, it would make that target blinded, in which case it can shoot you for a short time. On the third column, you can go for envious assassin and on the fourth column, go for incandescent as well. Now onto the guardian games weapons. Let's start with the new one that just came out this event. It's an arc grenade launcher and it's actually a waveframe. Here's what you need to run. On the first column, be sure to go for volatile launch. On the second column, be sure to go for high velocity rounds, which will give you plus 10 reload and plus 10 velocity. On the third column, go for volt shot. And on the fourth column, go for chain reaction. And for the origin trait for these event weapons, it's called classy contender. Final blows with this weapon grants class ability energy. On to the next one. It is a strand kinetic scout rifle. Here's what you need to run. For PvE on the first column, be sure to go for arrowhead break. The second column, accurized rounds. The third column, four times the charm. Rapidly landing precision hits will return two rounds to the magazine. And on the fourth column, put explosive payload. Projectiles create an AOE detonation on impact. And for PvP on the third column, be sure to go for Zen Moment. And on the fourth column, be sure to go for Kill Clip. The last weapon for this event is his Void SMG. The first column is Arrowhead Break. On the second column is Extended Mag. On the third column is Repulsor's Brace. And on the fourth column is Destabilizing Rounds. This is extremely good for a Void Hunter build, just FYI. And for PvP on the third column, I do recommend going for dynamic sway reduction and on the fourth column go for rangefinder i hope you guys have a good rest of your day evening or afternoon be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe and peace join the discord